Hi everyone, it's Nicole here for Lawn Fawn today with a teacher appreciation card featuring a whole bunch of awesome new products from Lawn Fawn, part of their fall and winter 2018 release. We are going to create our own pattern background with dies using the outside in stitched apple stackables and stitched apple frames. From the frames set, we're really only using the seeds and I'm going to die cut those from some ground coffee Lawn Fawn cardstock. I did my die cutting off camera to save a little bit of time. I'm also gonna use from the outside in stitched apple stackables, the smallest apple shape die cut from Chili Pepper Lawn Fawn cardstock, the small leaf die cut from Lawn Fawn Noble Fur cardstock, and the stem die cut from Chocolate Bar cardstock. And I die cut, I believe about eight or nine of these, and I'm gonna simply um, adhere them all over this panel. This background, you can see it's got a wood grain pattern to it, is part of the new Lawn Fawn Wood Grain Neutrals paper pack. Um, just like the name says, they're all neutrals. White, of course, is my favorite. <laughs> I love that white wood grain. And I just trimmed a strip of this that I am creating a little pattern paper from. One of my favorite things to do, whether it be with stamps, um, and I stamp an entire background and color it in and create my own background, ink, um, stencils, whatever it might be, I love creating my own pattern paper background. And dies are definitely a big part of that. I've created several over the last few months, um, different ones that you can see here on my YouTube channel different companies that have dies that work great for this. I definitely think this technique works best with smaller dies. So I purposely picked the smaller apple from this to create my all over pattern. The big ones, amazing for creating maybe an apple banner. Creating apples, maybe you're a teacher and you want to create a whole bulletin board with the kids' names on them. Um, you could create a shaker from the stitched apple frames. Lots of ways to do this. Shaped apple cards, really, really cute. Lots of great ways to use, use these dies and a fantastic addition to the collection of Lawn Fawn dies where they have a lot of different shapes. We have so many different ones now that can be used in a multitude of ways and I think that's really fun. Another idea I had for this, if you're a scrapbooker, I think it would be cute to use these on scrapbook pages because of the size. I think they would be really cute um, to decorate your pages with. I am filling in everything, just assembling my apples, and then once I have everything in place, I'm gonna put an acrylic block on top to hold it down. The smaller pieces, the stems, the leaves were adhered with liquid adhesive and I am a big fan of putting something heavy on top while that glue dries so that they lay nice and flat. I've also taken some long scissors and I'm trimming anything hanging off the edge. This gives the illusion of a pattern paper background. I also want to take all those little seeds that we die cut using the stitched apple frames die and adhere those throughout the card. Just create little, or fill in some of that little white space with these little accents. I think they're a really fun touch. I'm gonna do this all over. Again, make sure some of them hang off the edge. And once I have the background all finished up, we can adhere that to the bottom of a side fold card base. I'm just gonna adhere this whole panel directly to the card base. I'm not gonna be layering any different pattern paper up at the top of the card. I had tried a couple different things. I'm just laying some different cardstock colors back behind there. And I ended up really just liking the simplicity of white. Um, at first I thought maybe blue, the mermaid cardstock is always my go-to cardstock and it just, wasn't quite the right color. I thought maybe green um, and nothing else really worked. And I decided I liked the simplicity of white. 
I'm gonna take my tape runner, put some nice strong adhesive here along the bottom edge, pop that little panel down there. Now before I add my thanks teacher line border, which is die cut from Lawn Fawn Black Licorice cardstock, I want to adhere any other images that might slightly be underneath that because I'm going to have to adhere this with liquid adhesive. I really feel like liquid adhesive is the best for these little delicate line border sentiments. I want to make sure anything that's going to go behind that is already adhered. And for this card, I am going to use the new So Owlsome, which is an adorable play on words. Lawn Fawn is so great at that. Two of the owls from this stamp set, a pair of glasses and an apple. These are going to kind of frame up the sentiment. I also need to pick something to stamp up above. I really like the combination of die cut and stamped sentiments and originally I was going to use thanks teacher for owl you do but that would have needed to go below the line to really make sense and I didn't feel like adding um, a strip of cardstock. I didn't feel like adding a banner. I just I really felt like every the rest of what I wanted to put on the card needed to be up above that thanks teacher line. So I adjusted and actually used the Your Owlsome thanks teacher, which I think is super cute and works really well. I am gonna stamp my owls and apple now. Now I'm gonna tell you, originally I thought I could stamp the glasses on the front facing owl and that I wouldn't have to die cut that separately. There is a separate die for that. And I don't know why I thought this would, you know, be better, <laughs> I guess, but I left it in because I wanted to show you that I do not really particularly like how it turned out. And I ended up die cutting the glasses separate or stamping the glasses separately and I will color the, or not color them in, but die cut them rather with that coordinating die and layer it over and it worked really well and I'm glad I did it that way. I am coloring in my images, both owls, I decided to color the same, keep it really easy, consistent, E40, 43, 44, and 47. We'll use a little R20 for the cheeks and YR24 and 27 for beaks and feet. Just kind of depends. I'm also going to leave in, I originally thought I would color my apple in a lighter color way. So R30, 35, and I colored it and was really not happy with how light it was. I like this color for apples. I've done it before, but I didn't have a whole bunch of really red apples hanging out at the bottom of the card. And that first colorway just did not work with the rest of the design. So I ended up using our 35, which was my darkest color in that original color scheme, 37 and 59. And that really complements and coordinates with the apples that I've die cut much better. I'm going to use a stamp positioner to stamp the Your Owlsome above where Thanks Teacher is going to go. The Thanks Teacher is not adhered yet, but it really serves to help guide me in where I want to stamp that. I used the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink to stamp this. I did it a couple times to make sure it was nice and dark black. I have die cut the So Owlsome images and I'm going to adhere them to my card so that I can go ahead and get that thanks teacher line border in place, add finishing details to my cute little owls, to the apple, and kind of just bring it all together. Especially this time of year, I think this is a great time to maybe make some teacher appreciation cards, have them on hand to hand out I think it's always great to let our teachers know that we appreciate them. These little glasses, so super cute. I'm gonna fill the lens of the glasses with glossy accents 
so that it gives more of the illusion of glasses, which is something I do anyway, but I think for this it really works well. Now I'm drawing little thin lines of glue or little dots of glue on the back of the Thanks Teacher line border. And then we're just going to line this up, kind of center it with the comma. I'm just eyeballing it. And then lining that up along the edge, I put something heavy on top to hold it down while the glue dries. I'm going to grab my white pen, grab some scissors, trim off the excess. I love that the thanks line borders are a little bit longer than the five and a half inches for a landscape style card, because that means that you can kind of have a little bit of play to shift it one way or the other if you need to in order to fit maybe some extra sentiments if you're stamping something. Little glossy accents on the beaks. If there's any air bubbles in that glossy accents, make sure you take a straight pin or something sharp and kind of pop those. And it's gonna be kind of milky, but once it's dry, it's nice and clear and just gives a great finishing touch to those glasses. Final thing we're going to do is take a white detail pin. I know I've had a couple questions lately I've seen asking how I get such good detail with my white pen because you might have the same jelly roll pen and it's not working well for you. I don't know if this has a lot to do with it, but I do store mine upside down, tip side down, so that the ink is always right there ready to be used. I hope that makes sense. So in, instead of having the cap up in my little desk unit that I use to hold my pens. It's actually down in the bottom where the tip of the pin is. And I think that by storing them that way, it really does help so that they're always immediately ready to start drawing little lines or dots or whatever it might be. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this teacher appreciation card featuring lots of new stamps and dies from Lawn Fawn. The supplies I used to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies that you might be interested in. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.